Hey out there in Internet's land, it's me, Francis7, with another GMAX Bootcamp Extra. And in this case, we're going to learn how to make a single one-node prop. Um, this is one of those really complicated kind of things. Like, if you haven't made some furniture, like chairs, or if you haven't made a hoverboat or a vehicle, it's probably a little out of your league. Um, but, you know, maybe if you made a few objects and you pay close attention, uh, it won't be an epic fail. Anyhow, here are some things to remember. So, first off, um, you're limited to four textures. Unless you're making, like, I don't know, a five-node prop that's, I don't know, uh, yeah, five-node props, some of them uh, specs boost up to six textures, but most of them you're limited to four. Um, you're probably going to want to make it uh, a spec one, one-node prop. That's the only one with a wholesale that people can really afford to buy, but it's got some pretty fine limitations on it. You're limited to 250 polygons in LOD 0. You're limited to 125 in LOD 1 and only 70 in LOD 2. Um, LOD 2 isn't such a big deal. It's more the LOD 1 at, uh, at which point it may still be visible in somebody's hand, especially if it's a larger prop. So you might want to build to LOD 1 specs and then just cut it down a little bit for LOD 2 and make LOD 0 the same as LOD 1. Um, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, you probably don't need to be making a prop right now, but and you're probably on your way to that frustration level. If you still haven't watched the order of things video that I made, you may want to dig that out because it deals with the complexity of everyday items. Uh, for the rest of us, let's get started making that prop. And we're going to start off with an object I've already made, so it should be under spec and we'll be all set and ready to go because this is mostly about how to take that model you've made and make it into a prop. Alright, so this is the model I'm going to be working with and it's the pad model that I developed for the Gorgon Chronicles and uh, what I did is I went through this model and I made sure that it pretty much fit in the specs for a prop. I mean it was a knickknack to start with so I didn't have to cut it down much. Mostly just LOD2. But when I went to the do it, I went, I went to submit it so I go into the file menu and I, I click submit to there and I go through this process and then what I do is I go in here and I uncheck where it says only show product types valid for this submission. I scroll down to the bottom and I click on prop builder. Now none of these are going to work because it doesn't have the right number of nodes, it's, uh, it's got the wrong visible distance, all that sort of stuff. And then the cheapest one to pick is the one node config one animated. So um, animated props can have uh, the low level ones at least can have two textures. I don't remember if you can have more than two in the upper ones, I doubt it. Uh, but you have four textures total and two of them can be animated. I click details and what I'm looking for here is to make sure everything goes okay. Well the, the distance really doesn't matter. That's set by the node. <coughs> Apologies, I'm a little sick today in the prop. What matters is you've got your uh, your verts and your polygons for your different LODs. All, all, all your ducks are going to be in a row and nothing is saying hey that's not wrong. Uh, scrolling down this list the only thing I've got wrong are uh, the view distance those are set by the LEDs and of course the node count. So I'm all ready to make this into a prop. I've got everything else under control. The number of textures is right, the number of little uh, size protector is right, the, the LODs is now right, and the vert is now right. Now I'm ready to start taking this uh, model, which from this point on we're going to call a mesh, and we're going to put this into um, a structure, uh, basically a template, so that we can position it into the hand and then we sort of get rid of all that stuff and then we complete our prop and submit it to there and we'll see how it looks. Once again, this is not really the easiest of things to be doing. Alright, so here we are in GMAX where I was sort of working on this model and I'm going to save it and uh, I'm going to name it, I don't know, for merge or something like that just to, to have it here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change some of the names of the items. Uh, since it was a knickknack, I mean honestly I have a collision, I don't need it, I'll delete it. I don't need the shop node, I guess I was submitting it as a shop to test it. But I do need these things, these were the LODs and in a standard model they're called level of detail 0, level of detail 1, level of detail 2. Well unfortunately these are going to become what we call our mesh in, in a model. You have the LODs, you have a node and attached to that node is a mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each one and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to rename it uh, like mesh something. I don't know. We'll name this one just to keep things straight. Mesh zero. 
I'll go back to the selection tool. I'll grab uh, LOD1. And I'll select that. Oops, I didn't do it right. Click twice. LOD1. I'll select that and I'll name it Mesh1. And then I'll go ahead and select the final one, LOD2. I'm going to name that Mesh2. And then I'm going to select the two items I don't need. The collision, I'm going to hold down my control key, click on the, the master node, which happens to be a shop. Select both those, press delete to get rid of them. Now all that I am left with are the three LODs, one of them which looks kind of weird, by the way. They look funny this way. I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to pause the camera while I open up uh, the model. The model I'm going to open up is the uh, template. And since I'm making this for a guy, I'm going to open up the guy template model. All right, and uh, here I'm. I've opened the the male guide model, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to name it Pad 1A or something like that. And I'm saving it into where I'm. Uh, well, I got to save it to the right spot. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So saving this in here. Now this particular model has a variety of things in it. It has all the different nodes you're going to need. We're only going to be using uh, one node. Uh, that's um, this one right here in the wrist. Uh, the wrist node I found works better for putting things in hand than the finger node. Uh, it tends to bend the right way, especially if you twist your wrist. Uh, it'll look a lot better. It works better for swords and stuff like that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the file menu and we're going to merge some stuff in, but uh, let's go ahead and get rid of some stuff too. Uh, first of all, if you take a look at the structure of this, you're going to see a whole lot of junk you don't need. And not anything, put anything on the back the chest, the head, the ankle, the clavicle, left elbow, left finger, you know, etc. I don't need a whole lot of these. All I need is right wrist, which is like the last one on the list is the one I need to keep. So I'm going to get rid of all these other nodes. Um, they're not the LODs, they're just node this, node that, node the other. I don't need them for a one node prop. So I select those, hit delete, they're all gone. Now what I'm left with is basically the master node and LODs, which are all down here, and the one node I'm going to be working with. That, that'll keep things a little bit straighter. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll save this again, because sometimes my little zoom-in program causes things to crash. Up under the, if it ever saves. Uh, it doesn't like saving, I think, because there was originally a texture applied to the, the male dummy here. Uh, male dummy is actually pretty useful uh, when you're making your models and putting things together. Let's go ahead and we're going to merge in. So from the file menu, we're going to select Merge. And I'll have to go to the same folder, and I made a, one on my desktop called, uh, I think it was Pad, Prop Pad, and I named this for Merge. And what I want to merge in is the Mesh 1 at 0, 1, and 2. And here they are, and now I'm ready to start moving them around. Uh, so let me grab these, and hopefully they're the right size. And I'll maneuver this up into the hand so we can see what the heck we're doing here. Let's zoom in a bit here on these guys. And let's see, this is the uh, side that has to be rotated. So what we'll do is we'll rotate it here. Try and rotate as straight up and down as I can. You don't want to get things at funny angles until you basically get them in the right shape to begin with. And that's uh, 180. There we go. And let's put this into the hand, see how, much, how big it looks. That actually looks pretty darn good, actually. Let's tilt it a little bit this way. Uh, I'm going to bring it up farther so the flashing buttons are more visible and you're holding on to the bottom part of the pad and then just to make it a little snazzier we'll uh, tilt it a little bit sorry oops grabbed all I grabbed all three here Hang on. Or, I grabbed one of them ah darn it I need all three of these no, I don't need the collision I just need the meshes so I, I'm sorry I'm reselecting these things Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Here we go. And this window. By the way, Control Z if you accidentally grab them wrong, will grab you the right ones. And that looks at a sort of a. Just by tilting it just a little bit off, it makes it look more like a human being is holding on to it. And that's not too bad. There we go. Now we've sort of got our, our pad in our hand. It looks like somebody's holding on to it. It's a funky angle. You know, more of an organic angle. It's an inorganic object, but might as well look, make it look cool. Okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Make sure you don't save over your original mesh model. I already gave this a name earlier. Uh, so, okay, next, uh, what don't we need anymore? Well, we no longer need the, the body of the avatar. Obviously, that's going to be a lot of polygons. So that's called avatar. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and delete it. Uh, we do have to have a collision mesh, but I really don't like this one at the moment, so I'm going to select it and get rid of it. 
And now what am I left with? Well, a, a bunch of nodes. Uh, it's now time to glue all these things together. And uh, here, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to grab uh, the node. We're going to start duplicating this node. We're going to have three copies when we get done. We're going to need to rename them. So uh, first thing I do is going to go to the Edit menu, and I am going to Clone. Uh, if you don't know the Clone tool, it just makes a duplicate in place of the item and asks you what you want to name it. So I clone it. I'm going to name it Node 00. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure they all have to be named Node 00, but it, this is the way we're going to do it. Okay, take that node. I'm going to use the link tool, which is up here if you haven't seen it. It's the link tool. And I'm going to go into the select the, the parent object, and I'm going to click LOD0. This node is going to be linked to LOD0. And I say link. Okay, I go back in and take another. Oh, let me, oh, let me go back to the move and select tool. Let's take a look. And with the tree turned on, now we should see the way it looks. The master node uh, is the parent of all, then there's a child node LOD0, and then the node is a child of that. Now what we need to do is take the first mesh, which is uh, mesh 0. Oh, don't tell me I just crashed the darn thing. I'm going to select the first mesh, which is mesh 0, which is the used to be the LOD0, but now it's our mesh, which is going to be the model that's held in the hand. And we're going to link that one to... Uh, node 0, 0, and we'll link that in. Let me show you how that looks. So I'm going back to the four arrow tool. And now we have linked mesh, it should say mesh 0, 0. I'm going to need to change that. They'll all need to be, to be mesh 0, 0 when they get done. And that's linked to the node, and the node is linked to the hand bone. The hand bone is linked to the backbone and, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sick today, so this is not very amusing to me. And I'm not really having a good time. Uh, you guys all might as well just tune out right now. No, just kidding. Okay, so next thing, we need another one of these nodes. So I'm going to go back to the right wrist node. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go edit. I'm going to clone it again. I'm going to name this one. Guess what? No, you're wrong. It's node 00. zero. This is why five node props get so confusing. They're all named the same dang thing. And it's hard to tell what it is. Okay, so now I've got node 00, zero again. I'm going to link that one to, yeah, you would think it would be node 01, but it's not. I'm going to link that one to LOD1. So, uh, by the way, it, it doesn't show, but it would be down here. But we're going to link it to LOD1. We'll link it in. There we go. And now we've linked it. And now we have node 00 once again. And each one's going to have a node 00. Now we're going to go ahead and get the mesh. And this was the mesh that was number 1, which was LOD1 in the old model. We're going to link that one to node 00. zero and link it in and there we go yes so now LOD1 is prepared we have LOD1 we have its node which is the thing in the wrist and we have uh, mesh1 which is going to need to be renamed uh, mesh00 also confusing isn't it okay we take the final one of these nodes we, we don't really need to clone it because we don't need a fourth one of it we're just going to rename it node guess what zero zero we're going to link new node 0, 0 to LOD2. That's going to be the node on LOD2. I know this is confusing. If you're trying to figure this out for the first time, this is probably not the best kind of item to be making until you've made some furniture. Um, okay, so we got that mo modeled in there. Now we just need mesh2, which is LOD2 from the old model, and we're going to link that one to the node, which is already named node 0, 0, but it's the one that's under LOD2. And now we have linked all of our models, and they're all in the correct order. It looks like a, like a ladder going down each time. Now, all we need to do is rename these. They all got to be mesh 0, 0. You can't have mesh 1 and mesh 2, so you're going to need to rename these. So we'll start with mesh 2 at the end. Now that we know which one it is, it's attached to an LOD 2. So if we need to change the model and revise it, it's attached to an LOD 2. So we can find that out. Uh, this one was mesh named mesh 1. It's also named mesh 0, 0. Uh, and this one up here is mesh zero zero. The thing is, when you're making a five-node prop, uh, all of these darn things, the nodes are are named. Oh, it's confusing. Anyway, let's not worry about that right now. Okay, next thing we need to do, we need to grab all the nodes. So I'm going to select objects. I'm using the control key, where I'm uh, basically. Uh, I've, I've grabbed all three of the nodes, so and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these. There's a limit on size, 
So I'm going to take this node and I'm going to put it as, as close as I can so I can keep everything as close to the center of what's happening as possible. Uh, that way, basically, I'm not using up much space. Uh, a, a one node prop is limited to having like, what is it, a, less than a meter in size total. So by putting all these things in the center, if you have multiple nodes too, if you put them all in the center, your model is smaller. And so you may find that you get, you get a lower spec just by doing it, especially when you're doing multi-node props. My Fox props have like the feet sticking out of the mouth. It looks really funny, but hey, it submits better. All right. <coughs> now the final steps. Uh, we need a collision mesh. Let's zoom out a little bit. And what I'll just do is just draw a little box around this thing here. And uh, there we go. That's good enough here. Uh, we could use the one default one that came with it. Uh, let's see. Uh, how big can this box be? I can't really remember. Let's make it one by one. Uh, let's make it 0 0.9. I think it has to be under uh, 0 0.9. And now my machine has decided it's going to freeze. Wouldn't you know it? It's 0 0.9. Okay, and uh, 2. I can't remember this bit. So anyway, here's my uh, my node. Um, once again, this probably needs to be more in the center. And yeah, okay. And we're going to name it COL for collision. And we link this one, by the way, to the master node. It's linked to the master node. Let's take a look real briefly at what our, our layout looks like. We have our master node. We have LOD0, which we didn't mess with. We have LOD1, which was built into the model. We didn't mess with it. LOD2, once again, another dummy node in the middle. We didn't mess with it. Although, to get it in the lower specs, we might have to go and change the draw distance on it. So we'll see. Then we have um, node 00. These are the, the three wrist nodes that we created. Well, two of them we created, one we renamed. Uh, they're linked to the LODs. And then we have the mesh, which is underneath and linked to the nodes. And this one on top with LOD0 was our uh, you know nice looking model. LOD1, this was our not so nice looking model. And the one here under LOD2, uh, <coughs> it's a really kind of crappy model, which is seen from a distance. So that's basically how our uh, thing looks. Now we go to the file menu where we save this. Probably a good idea to save as you're going along. Uh, you know, okay, here we go. And we go to the file menu, we go to uh, export. And we're going to name this Prop 1, just not very original. Make sure you're selecting the their model exporter from your exporter list when you're saving it. I'm going to save it. And, and make sure you save it into a folder where you know where it is because the way GMAX works. Kind of a pain. I know I'm on the right folder already. So I've exported this. Next step, back to the previewer. Let's fire it up. Here's the previewer. Let's open the model. Uh, in this case, Prop 1 model. Here we are. Here's our model. We just need to load the materials. I have four textures. They're all ready to go. I know they're the right size because I used them on a model before. There is the, uh, oh, this, man, it's dark. I need to turn the light up, but maybe it's much. Here we go. All right. Uh, I go to the next material. I have a screen. The screen is animated. So I go to the animation tab and I pick scrolling and a speed and apply that in there. And there we've got a screen that's scrolling. That's good. Uh, we have a grip that goes on the side in this model. There we go. There's there's the grip. It that doesn't look too. That's a pretty cool looking texture actually. It's just made of a uh, like a drain pipe, like they would make gypsy out of on Mystery Science Theater. It was outside uh, where I work. Took a picture of that. It was kind of cool. Uh, let's go with uh, the lights. Um, and they are also scrolling. And I don't know. I think I had the speed about 15. And I don't remember if I had an angle or not. Yeah, I did. I think I had a 90 degree angle on this. That made them look much more interesting. There we go. So there, there's some uh, lights. They glow a little bit. Uh, and there's all our textures. Now we need to see if it, if it, if it's submittable as a one-node prop. So let's submit to there. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure about that size of the collision mesh. And I'm going through the process, and it says blah. Okay, so all are, it's all red. That means it's not submittable. Let's take a look. LOD, the distance is wrong. It's supposed to be 25. Uh, it's set to 75. Distance again, distance again. Bounding box width. Okay, it's too large. Uh, oh, my. I've got a lot of crap here. Oh, my. Okay, well, let's deal with a couple of them at a time. Uh, root node origin outside the bounding box and bounding box depth. 
0.8. Okay, so the, the collision mesh is way too big, uh, and among other things. So, okay, back to GMAX to fix those things. Let's fire it back up. Uh, let's just grab the collision mesh. It's probably the easiest thing to do. We'll start by shrinking it down to a more reasonable size here. We'll put it more in the middle. There we go. That probably should take care of a lot of those problems. I'm going to go ahead and grab all the nodes using the control key. And I'm going to put them inside the uh, root nodes. Maybe this will uh, stop our bounding box issue. I don't know for sure. Um, but it should. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. What else do I need to do? Uh, what else was wrong with it? Let's go back and take a quick look. Let's submit again. Go through the process. It hates me. It hates me. Okay. Oh, the distance. So distance should be 25, 50, 100. Okay. That's real easy to solve. So if you've never had this problem before, here's how you do it. You go and you select the master node. You right click on it in the window. Ah, it's not letting me right click on it. I must have something run. Oh, it's because I got the previewer running behind it. Hang on. Let me hide the previewer for a second here. All right. Right click. You say properties. You right click and you say properties. Okay. You go to the tab up at the top that says user defined. You change the numbers. Right now, they're at 75, 200, and 700. So we put it at 25, uh, was it 50, and 100? I think that's what they wanted. So 25, 50, and 100. This should have solved, and I say, okay. That should have solved most of our problems. Let's save this again. we got to export it again once it's done saving. My, this is kind of a messy tutorial. I'm sorry this didn't work out, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to see the problems as they're happening. Let's go to export, and we'll name this Prop 2 so I don't get confused. I put a number on the end. Sometimes you got to go through a lot of revisions. Let's pull up Preview again. we got to load up all the textures again. So Prop 2 model. Let's load those with textures really quickly. Uh, you know what? I don't think I'm going to bother to animate it until I've got the the darn thing set up so let me just go ahead and put the textures on because that's going to save some time and i get the feeling the bounding box issue is still going to be a, a problem uh let's see uh, uh we get the grip got the lights all right so there are all the uh, different textures it's not animated let's go to submit to there blah 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 it's still saying what all right let's take a look okay we got rid of most of the problems now just bounding box errors, root outside of bounding box. I never 100% understood exactly what causes this. Um, hmm. Let's take a look. Actual is 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Ah, this is annoying as all get out, isn't it? Uh, node. It's point. Specification is minus 2.2. .2. Okay, I got a couple other ideas to try. Let's try this. Oh, no, I don't want to open a scanner. I don't have no idea what you're doing. Let's close this down. Close this down for a second. Let's grab the model. And let's do this. Let's grab all the nodes again. And maybe it's just complaining that the node is the mesh is too far outside. It could be that. So let's grab this. Let's just move it this way. Now we've got it mostly inside the uh, mesh. Let's try this, see if it's happier with this. All right, so let's save this. We'll export this. All right, bounding box errors are one of those things I never really understood very much. So, And, of course, my computer's giving me grief. Let's export. We'll name it Prop 3. usually don't have many problems with these, but then again, I usually make multi-node props. Let's go ahead and quit out of this for a second. Oh, back to the preview, I guess. And where we're going to open up the new version 3 model. This is taking a long time. I'm burning hard drive here. The screen. Oh, let me just open the model up again. I just did something bizarre there. Okay. The base metal. Ah, that's fine. And the screen. And that's fine. And uh, the grip. And that's fine. And uh, make sure while you're doing these things, you're not accidentally grabbing the uh, the DDS files that it generates. DDS files will show up in the previewer just fine, but uh, they won't uh, they won't submit to there. You actually have to because it tries to recompress them as DDS files and it makes a mess. 
So, okay, let's go to submit to there and see if we got it now. Yeah, sure enough, we got it. There we go. Pro, one node prop config animated one. Okay, now, here comes uh, the, the, the part you haven't seen before. So, here's the spec I want. It's prop one. If I go to details, it would tell you it's the cheapest animated prop we could make. Oh, except you know what? I forgot to animate my textures. I better go back and do that real quick. So if you've never animated textures, it's real easy. Uh, for example, the screen. There's an animation tab for each texture at the top. And I'm just going to pick scrolling and a speed. I think it was like 15 and an angle of 90 degrees because that's the way I set it up. Oh, except no, actually, screen is just uh, 0 degrees and 1. I'm thinking of the animated color. Okay, so there, let's make it 1.2 or something like that so it speeds by a little faster so basically uh, the speed is how fast it's going in this case it's going in this kind of a direction but you can change the angle and you know, make 180 go the other way you can also change the direction or you can have it alternate that's kind of fun it bounce back and forth anyway so there's that particular texture it looks like this uh, now we have one other texture it's animated we can have two animated textures in here so let's go to lights the animation is going to be scrolling uh, I think the 15 speed on this one, and it was a 90 degree angle. And then I get this sort of, uh, oops, I kind of moved all over the place there, but I sort of get this nice uh, sort of glowy light kind of thing going on that I like. I think that looks pretty cool. I say, okay, so there's there's my uh, there's my lights, and I've got my pad, and I'm ready to submit it. And uh, let's let's do it. So I submit to there. I go next. I say next. Here's the deal where you pick your, your thing. This is a one node animated. Now they have the animated textures. You'll notice that the non-animated one isn't an option anymore. I say next. Okay, here comes the thing that's different. Okay, node zero, zero. You remember that, right? What is it attached to? Well, the default is put it on your head. So you, you, you probably don't want this thing sticking out of your skull. I did that with one of my uh, sort of prop fuzzball things one time and submitted it, and it was sticking out of somebody's skull. They said, this can't be right. This is going to be right wrist. Once again, the right wrist is, is, you can attach this to any node, but the way it's going to pop out is going to be very strange. So right wrist is the way we set this up. And then we get another choice. You only get this choice, by the way, if you use the right wrist. You don't get it with the left wrist. But the next choice is, what pose do you have? Do you want it to be a normal, which is be the hand would just be at your side, do you want it to be like a drink, like a their drink, which is what I'm going to use for this? Or do you want it to be like a treat bag? Treat bags, they got you kind of a nice little angle uh, on where the hand goes. You might find it pretty useful for some of your props. Try it out. Anyway, drink is what I want. I say next. I'm going to go ahead and browse. I already got a, can uh, a catalog for it. I just got to name it something. TGC Prop Data Pad. And I got to put a description from Miracle Pictures Series Series The Gorgon Chronicles comes this lovely prop data pad at data da da d a t a pad as used by. Zodan Grot. Oh, Grot. I just said that in my video, didn't I? Okay, anyway. Uh, oh, this catalog is wrong, so I'll need to pause this here and fix this image. All right, now the final thing to do is to go to the review page, get a copy of it, and try it out in World. Remember, if it's completely hosed, you can cancel it and just go back to GMAX and try again. Um, usually it takes me about uh, three tries to get a prop that actually works right. Let's see. Here I've got this one. I've tried it. And here, huh. What do you know? First try. Let's check it out. Yeah, I gotta admit, I think that looks pretty darn good. I've got my prop done. Well, anyway, uh, I know this has been kind of long and arduous. Oh, and I remembered what the problem was with the, uh, the bounding box. Uh, you have to have like a polygon that's inside actually, uh, well, the nodes, I mean, the mesh. And um, You know, now that I got this prop, I'll probably submit it again once or twice with some different animations so people can hold a pad that has a different display on it. But um, 
honestly, that thing with the uh, bounding box error, that's because really none of the mesh was uh, actually over the nodes. Uh, so uh, moving it over the node seems to have solved that problem. Um, in normal models, I would just throw like a triangle or something down in LOD2 where no one's ever going to see it below the ground level, and it would be below the nodes. But you can't really do that with a prop um, that I know of. So anyway, just moving that seems to have solved that problem. Uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out all the other GMAX Bootcamp uh, videos, and I hope this helps.